Okay, everyone, we've got a special Valentine's Day episode for you today. I'm in collaboration right now with Tori from Monsters and Makeup. Go ahead and like and subscribe to her channel. She's going to show you an edgy Valentine's Day makeup look for Valentine's Day. And I'm doing a barbed wire heart necklace. Both go hand in hand great. So stay tuned. Check out her channel. Check out mine. Like and subscribe. Thank you very much. Let's go. All right. So here are the materials that we're going to be using to make our barbed wire heart. Let's start down here with quick explanations. Some E6000 a chain to ha to hang on your neck for the the heart um, you can get any any type but i will ask that you keep in mind how thick your chain is because you're going to need some screw eyes and these are from daris that's the, the brand and these were the biggest i could find at the store they're five millimeters you could see how how small the hole is just make sure that when you buy these that your ribbon or chain actually it's more an issue with the chain than ribbons can go through it also we're going to be using a thumbtack some bake clay this is sculpey or the fimo kind um, i chose to get red we're going to end up spray painting it but i figured might as well just get the, the, the color that i want it and then some jewelry wire the one I have here is a 16 gauge, but um, I wouldn't go any thicker than that just because it'll be, it'll be too much. It'll take, you know, steal the show from the heart. So try and keep it at least 16 gauge or smaller for the barbed wire. And then here I have a reddish, a dark red spray paint that I'm going to spray paint my heart with after I sculpt it and bake it. And then I'm going to hit it with some, um, gloss enamel spray to seal it you know protect it and all that stuff okay so i had started off with two of the bars of the sculpey clay but um i thought that my heart was a little too just a tad bit too small so i added a third bar so you gotta like this takes kind of it, it does take a few minutes you gotta like kind of warm it up in your hands because it's really hard at first and make it just pliable so where you can squeeze it. When, once you have it, uh, I guess you needed it enough or whatever in baking terms. I don't know. I'm not a sculptor. Um, once it stops hurting your hand and you can like, you know, squish it and stuff, it's, it's ready to go. So <clears throat> to make a heart, and I kind of messed around with this for a while and I think I found the trick. You want to start off with a perfectly smooth ball you want to make it as spherical and smooth as possible okay so something like that look it's like a little clown nose so start off like that and then what you want to do is start lightly squishing it like kind of making it like an oval and then at the same time you're making an oval, you want to like squish it too. So you're kind of making like um, a cube almost. And then once you start doing that, get some kind of thin, like thinner than a pencil. This is like for, oh God, what is this called? I forgot. It's, it's like to do hook and what is it knit somebody somebody will correct me right now in the video i freaking forgot what it's called but you want to take something that has a smooth edge so that way you have the little the little crack for the heart okay and then once you have it like that kind of push it outwards and like pull out the little things here this, 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 this isn't going to happen within a few minutes. This might take you a while because you got to keep rolling it and squeezing it and then start pinching the edge here to the side and up top and then pulling this out some more. If one looks a little longer than the other, you want to kind of like squish it, go back with your tool, give it another butt crack. So you got to kind of see how I'm doing it. 
pinch it some more, squish it some more. See in here, it's just a little, a little uneven, so I gotta keep on. And this, and the clay does kind of stain, so if you're doing this, please wear like your ugly clothes because you're gonna start like touching your clothes and your face and then you're gonna get the, the dye all over yourself. So again, like pinch, make it like a triangle, do it to the sides, make it stumpy again, smooth out this part, smooth out this part. If you need to take like a pencil and like kind of roll it like a rolling pin to smooth it out, go ahead and do that like how I'm doing here. See, that works great. So, so it's looking it's looking more like a heart more and more, as you can see. So it's all about pinching and rolling. So I'm just gonna keep doing this until I am happy with the end product. Good luck, because this isn't easy. This this took me a couple tries. My hands are all sore because I have to keep kneading the, the damn clay, but just keep doing it until you have a, a heart that you can be proud of, all right? So I'm, I'm pretty, I'd say I'm pretty happy with this. I'm not gonna go any further cause I'll probably just mess it up. But that's, that's as good as I can do it. Now, since this is bakeable clay, it says here on the directions, you're going to do it at 275 Fahrenheit or 130 Celsius for 30 minutes per 1 fourth inch or six millimeters. So since I use three bars, of this stuff. I'm gonna take a ruler with the millimeters on it and let me see because I want to make sure we bake this for the correct amount of time. So what is this? This is fifteen. Fifteen millimeters? What did I just say? Fifteen millimeters? Oh man, okay. So we're gonna do this for about an hour at 275. Make sure this, at this thickness, it gets properly baked and you know, it's it won't fall apart if you do it right. Of course, if yours is less or one fourth inch, depending however you wanted to make your heart, then of course you'll do it at 30 minutes or 45 minutes, but I'm going to do this at about an hour just to, just because of how thick it is. So let me go pop this in the oven, wait an hour, and then I will return. Into the oven at 275 for about an hour because mine was around 15 millimeters. So yeah, let's play the waiting game. All right, so while the thing is baking in the oven, let's go ahead and start on the barbed wire. So let's roll out. It doesn't have to be a lot. I mean, it's a little hard. So roll out, what is this? About six inches. Ow, let's start off with six inches. So let's clip it. 
And barbed wire, it has, there's two of these and they're, and they're twisted together. So let me roll out another one. Uh, about the same, same length. So take, take the edges here. If you need to, your pliers, which I do because my hands are just like useless in the winter, even though it was really warm today, it just, winter time is not a good time for my hands and my joints and all that stuff. I'm getting like super old. <laughs> but besides me, let's talk about this barbed wire here. So once you got a, a twist up here, you can hold the end like I'm doing here with my pliers and then just start twisting the rest of it together. Just twisting the rest of it. Nope, nope, I gotta hold on. And it might get all warped out of place how it is now and then, but it's, it's okay. I mean, we'll straighten it when the time comes with the pliers. So no worries. So let me get some bigger pliers. And these. And I'm just kind of like Try to straighten it out as much as you can. Ah, sorry, I keep doing this like off camera. that's pretty decent right there now for the next part barbed wire has these little spikes you know that have a little section so just go ahead and snip off another small piece of wire let's look at this I cut it's about two inches and then what you'll do here is you'll wrap it around this main part. Try and keep it as close as you can because in barbed wire like they're they're not real spread out. As best as you can because it, it, it starts to get harder as you yeah okay. So try and do something like that. So two inch sections and try and fit it, you know, one, two, three, four. I think I'll have enough for four of them on my little six inch piece. Don't do it on the ends here and here. Leave, um, I'd say leave about a half inch space between the ends on each side. Cause we're uh, later on when the, when the heart stops baking and it's, it's cooled off and ready, ready to be handled, we're going to have to stick these ends in the heart. And we want to get it in as far as far as we can so that way this does not come out in in the future once you start wearing it so I'm gonna go ahead and put four more and then that's it also um, I may or may not depending on how it looks with the heart I may do two of these to make like an X on my heart I don't know it depends on you you know don't let my creativity stunt your creativity if you want to do three one I mean, if you want to completely choke the heart in barbed wire, by all means, go to town and make a bunch of these. Okay, so we're going to take our screw eyes. I've already removed my heart from the oven. It's just a little warm still, but I think now's a good time to um, go ahead and start marking the holes where the barbed wire is going to be and the screw eye is going to be at the top. All I need is one. So what I was 
the thing I'm doing with this thumbtack was with this, let me see. It's kind of just marking in the center here where I want the screw eye to go. I'm gonna kind of push it in a little deep just to help later on with the screw eye because it the, obviously the clay will probably be a little bit harder than what it is now. Just to like something to guide it. Or you can even take the screw eye itself and then just push it down in there. Just kind of make the, the tunnel for it. But don't don't leave it in there because, well, you can leave it in there if you plan on not spray painting your heart, but I am and I definitely don't want to get my screw eye painted. So I'm just gonna twist it in here and then I'm gonna just twist it right back out. And then later on when we go to add this, I'll just dab a little bit of E6000 on the edge of this and then screw it back in so that way it doesn't it doesn't screw out of place like all things sometimes do um, so that's that for the screw eye so now I want to actually go ahead and mark out in my heart on the side where I want to put in the my barbed wire so if it's a little crooked try and just like pinch it out and straighten it on the ends as good as you can get and also same thing so let's start make the making the markings for this if all else fails once it dries and it's it's hard if you have a drill bit you can go ahead and drill in the the holes for your barbed wire but of course, if you don't, I think this is a good alternative to just make your tunnels and markings for the barbed wire. So when you put it in, you know, it, it, it'll still do the job, I guess. So just kind of feed it in there. Get it in there a little, a little deep. And then just twist it right back out. So I have my marking on one side and let's do another one over here. Okay, so now I have my little holes started. Again, if you did more than these, then do your additional holes for this. Now I'm gonna let this, it's still, it's not hot anymore. It's, I'd say it's lukewarm at this point, but I'm just gonna let it dry, com not dry, I'm sorry, cool off completely overnight before I even touch it with spray paint. dry turn it over let that dry and then put the enamel so I've already spray painted this and I sprayed it with the um, clear coat the spray enamel now uh, what I did find while I was making this and I will tell you as if you know you watch my channel I make mistakes and learn new things all the time with my projects to pass on that knowledge to you so you do not make the same mistakes I do <clears throat> Now it did remain tacky after I, I spray painted it and with the clear coat. So what I did, and this seems to have stopped it, I got a bunch of baby powder and I just put this in a towel and I just completely covered it with the, the baby powder and I just kind of like rubbed it around and, and now it's not, it's not tacky anymore. So now let's go ahead and get our E6000 and let's put in our screw eye first. 
need to buy a new E6000, as you can see. All right. Oh my God, then I can't put this up. All right. Just rub a little bit in there. All right, there. I can't. I can't turn it anymore. But there you go with that. That's ready to go now. With the holes that we also made previously, um, I still might go in and put another barbed wire. I don't know. It it looks good, but let's let's see how it goes. So again, I'm going to take some E6000 glue. Except in here, I'm just gonna rub it inside. And then I'm gonna take one part of this. I'm gonna have to clip this. About right here. And I'm just going to bend this to go into the little hole. Yeah, I think I'll do one more. That's really cute, but I think another one, maybe like going this way might be cute, or maybe another one down here. Here's something that I wanted to do. I was thinking about it. I think it's a good good idea. I'm gonna go ahead and do a black wash on my heart, just like all over, even the metal. I mean, just do the whole thing. Pretty much how you do a black wash is um, you get like a container and fill it with water, and then you get any type of black acrylic paint. And it's just like a light washing. It's not like I'm painting the heart black. It's like a very, a very light coating. So you squirt a little bit in the water. And then you go, you take your brush and just mix it up. So it becomes like 
that color. Super watery. If you want it a little bit darker, you could put in an additional little squirt in there of black. And then I also have a rag because I'm going to kind of like blot off the excess because it, it will be drippy all over the place. So I'm just going to cover my area really quick with a plastic bag. I have another paintbrush in here just in case this one doesn't do the trick. But I just go all over it. 